Check this guy out. Setting sun. Dingo keeping his company. Woohoo! There you go. Fish on a jig. Target species. Woohoo! Taylor on a jig. Beautiful fish, about 38. G'day, my name is Luke, and this is my wife, Jen. And here are our two growing boys, Liam and Elliot. We've been fishing, boating, and exploring the pristine waters of the Fraser Coast for about 10 years now. So subscribe and come join the adventure. <laughs> Another one! A very small tailor. But, uh... But a tailor. G'day folks, Luke Fitzpatrick here. Thank you for watching another fishing, boating, exploring video. This is the second episode capturing our recent beach fishing expedition along the eastern side of Gary Fraser Island. We captured so much awesome content that I've broken it into two episodes. This episode, episode 133, takes in the second half of the trip. And if you want to see the first half, go to episode 132. I really hope you enjoy both episodes. Righto, folks, we've been fishing. Sorry, I'll get the rod out of your face, um, out of my face. We've been fishing a lot with worm hooks and long shank hooks with pippies. Uh, day one, we started with worms and they were successful, but we were getting frustrated that they were getting taken so quickly. Uh, we went with pippies and we've had a lot of success with that. And now I'm going to try, I've got the uh, arrows offshore. Uh, it's a nine foot rod. It's pretty little heavy for this, but I'm actually going to start throwing these little jigs here. This is a 15 gram jig para. You know how much I love the jig paras. Um, and I'm going to throw these more into the white water, uh, the frothy stuff next to the entrance. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll put a drone up actually. I'll show you in the drone footage and show you where the gutter is the entrance to the gutter and where the back sandbank is and on the edge of that sandbank you get a lot of uh, white foam uh, and we're finding the fish sort of sit around that sort of area close to the entrance or the exit depending on what they're doing at the time before they come up into the drain so I'm going to cast this out I'm not going to rip it back like I would with a metal slug I'm going to uh, bounce it around a bit like I would a jig out in the off the boat I'm going to uh, be a bit erratic with it and see if I can find a dart, a dart or three on this. Okay. So let's give it a go. So if anything, this rod's probably a bit heavy for this. I should put this jig on the other rod, but we'll give it a go. Nice long cast. So you got that white water here. The drain's coming up. You got the entrance out there. hit then oh he didn't latch on oh that was right in that patch there we'll go again yep we're on oh yeah <laughs> Not the biggest fish, but you can see him in the waves out there. Use this wave to get him in. Ah, uh, he's coming back. There he is. Bring him up. Woohoo! There you go. Fish on a jig! He's got friends too. Whew. 
There you go. I got me 30 centimeters. A jig on a dart. A dart on a jig, sorry. A jig on a dart. A dart on a jig. Look at that. Nice. And on the arrows offshore. What are you doing? Coming to say hello. Beautiful fish, about 38. That was close that time. Check this guy out. Setting sun. Bingo keeping his company. Oh, Shane's got the cruiser out. It's perfect time of day. It's exciting, really exciting. Rightio, so big day today being Wednesday. We've uh, come back to our accommodation. We're not going to go up to the pub for dinner tonight. We're uh, cooking up some of our catch from earlier today. Uh, pretty simple sort of dinner, pan fry the fish and uh, chow it down basically. But uh, one of the beauties of staying here at Sailfish on Fraser, um, fully self-contained units, two bedrooms. Uh, bedrooms are down there, two bathrooms, it's all. It's all just too easy. It is really too easy. So anyway, am I burning the fish? I think I am. I better turn them over. Oh, so we've got a, a mix of whiting and tarwine, I think, in here. A little bit of flour, salt and pepper. And that is looking pretty good. Look at my red eye. I think I slept on my eye last night and I woke up and I got this terrible red eye going on. Ooh. Oh yeah. And uh, don't tell the girls, but we've got something to wash it down with. As mentioned in episode 132, we want to highlight to you through both episodes, the fishing pattern, which we settled upon after a week of trial and error. Throughout both episodes, we will show you exactly how we approach fishing each gutter at different stages of the tide, in the hope that you'll be able to apply your own version of this fishing pattern for your next epic adventure to Gari Fraser Island. This episode sees us switching from bait fishing to using lures, with a large focus on beach jigging. Good morning, everybody. We're uh, fishing again. Surprise, surprise. It is uh, Thursday. We had a bit of a sleep in this morning because of state of origin last night. Go the Maroons. And uh, we've come north today from Happy Valley. Fishing a gutter where we got all the tar wine the other day. So we thought we'd come back up here and give it a go. Starting off with bait fishing. Low tide is in about two hours. I'm at the top of the gutter. Liam is, uh, not Liam, Shane's about halfway and the mouth is a bit further down. And we'll see how we go today. Today we really want to try and find a tailor. So we think our best chance is going to be once there's a bit more water coming into the gutters. And we'll see how we go. Oh, we're getting bites. Yep, only a little thing. Whatever it is, first fish of the day might be a little dart or a whiting up though. Where is he? He's only tiny. A whiting. It's not a bad start. So where I'm getting all these fish folks is you can see where Shane is standing. He's standing right at the top of the gutter, okay? The shallowest point. And you can see behind him and going to the left, there's a sandbar, and then that sandbar comes all the way down, and then you can see some white foam down there. And that's sort of where the water is wrapping around the sandbar and leading back out through those breakers. 
and that's where the fish are at the moment. The reason I like using these worm hooks, the Kamigatsu worm hooks, is because of the two little barbs up high. Uh, when I thread the bait on, I just find they, once they get up on those little barbs up the top there, just holds it a bit better, presents it a bit better. Gives you that little bit of, little bit of extra grip. Give me a bait. I think I'll give the bait another couple of goes, and then I'm going to go get that jig that I had on yesterday. I'm actually going to use the jig right into that gap because I can actually see fish right down in the back down there in the waves. So I'm going to go with the little jig again, a little 15 gram jig. I can see fish in that swell out there, so we'll give it a go. During episode 132, we very much concentrated on fishing the front gutter. However, in this episode, we start to target the second slash back gutter with lures and jigs. This ultimately fleshed out our final fishing pattern for the week, providing us with effective fishing options across all stages of the tide. Right now, I'm going to change tack here a little bit. I can see the, some bigger dart fish just in behind where all that whitewash is coming across now. And I can't quite get the distance from where uh, Shane is. So I'm going to come around on this sand spit, try and come in at an angle. See if that works. Got the range on them. Oh, it's a little dart. He's not very big. There we go. There you go, another dart and a jig. How good's that? Now the tide's going out, so theoretically, I should be alright where I'm standing. Yep. Oh, another one. Oh, he came off. I'm looking into the sun, sorry folks. It's not the best uh, camera view, there'll be a lot of glare. Oh, he took that. no big ones yet I would love to grab a yep on the drop I'd love to take a tailor this way another one this one feels a bit better or I, I just don't know if he's in the he's in the swell a bit better jumped target species woohoo how good is that, folks? We did it! <laughs> yeah, way out there. Taylor on a jig. Rightio, so we've got Taylor, Dart, Whiting, Tarwine, and the jig. 
Oh, the beach jigging did it. Little 15 gram micro jig, jig para. Beautiful. I'm gonna keep going. Good morning, how good does that feel? We got our target species, crazy hair. Okay, I'm actually gonna mix things up today. Um, we've fished beach worms on day one, uh, mostly pippies on day two. Started throwing the little micro jig for beach jigging uh, late day two into today. Got our target species with it, with the tailor. So I'm now gonna just change around my outfits a little bit. I'm actually gonna put the micro jig on the lighter, eight to 15 pound, uh, what I've been using the bait on. I'm gonna do away with bait for the rest of the day or until things really slow down. So I'm gonna put the micro jig on that. Reason being, uh, it's a 15 gram jig, so it's quite light. And on that bigger uh, offshore spin, it's it's pretty light you can't really feel it too much so i figure on the 8 to 15 it'll uh I'll, I'll get a lot more feeling on what's going on not that it's gonna stop them the dark crawling all over the jig um and it should be able to cast the same distance all that sort of stuff so that's what i'm going to do now and i've got a another lure which i'm not allowed to tell you about that i'm going to put on the uh bigger rod that's all hush hush secret stuff top secret stuff um and I'm gonna give a go on that, on the bigger rod. And if that doesn't work, then I'll go to a, uh, a Gorilla Metal Slug as well to try and get the bigger tailor if we can find them. So I'm gonna go jig, metal slug basically today until it goes slow. And then uh, we'll go back to bait a bit later in the day. I'm gonna put the drone up as well so you can have a look at the layout of this particular gutter and where we're fishing. So you can get a good idea on uh, the areas that we're targeting where we've caught the fish this morning. So I'll get right onto that right now. Okay, so we got the lighter rod. Got the bite. It feels very different on a lighter rod. It's actually, um, it's actually a little harder to pick up the bite in the surf because of the, uh, the waves bashing the line. A little dart, I think. So we started this morning on uh, with a low tide approaching. It was low tide about 10 o'clock. So we fished a couple of hours of the last of the run out, hour or so of the run in. Then we ducked off and had a coffee and warmed our bodies up up at Cathedral's Beach. And then we've come back down and we're fishing the same gutters that we fished this morning, but there's a lot more water in them now. You'll notice there's a lot more foam out there as well. I'll put the drone up again so you can have a look but we're targeting the areas where the foam is. And the reason for that is the foam sits on top, casts shadow underneath, and it's a great place for fish to hide, okay? Especially if you can match it up with where Shane is down there at the moment. I think we can see him, way right down there. There's a sandbank coming out behind him. And where you can get that little drop off of the sandbank, the waves churning that all up, bit of foam over the top of it, Fish come in underneath that cover, hunt around looking for pippies and shells and all that sort of stuff under the cover, and they're protected from above and everything. So, great place to put your bait or your lure into that zone. Okay, folks. So, we have discovered that the jig uh, works really well. I'm now going to switch lures around just to have a bit of fun and see what we can get to work and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to put on a little gorilla. All right, it's got a nice bit of uh, shine to it. You can use these as jigs or uh, metals casting a tuna and stuff. So I'm going to throw this into same target areas I've been using and see if I uh, can get something to attack one of these. Uh, the way I rig it up is exactly the same as the jig, just tied direct to it. Uh, just with the uni knot. I go through two times, it's just the way I do it. And uh, three times through the hole and... Uh, we're ready to rock and roll, so we'll have a bit of fun with this this afternoon. 
I think we've got a few more tailor coming in now. So now that we've sort of figured out where they are and how they're biting and stuff, seems we're onto a bit of a pattern, which is good. Anyway, I'll uh, cut the tag off that, keep it in the back of the car. So that's it there. Um, we'll give this a bit of a burl and see how it goes. Taylor. Bring him up. Oh. Oh. Ah, oh, gotcha. Righty, -oh, so the little gorilla works as well. Unlike the jig, where we're using a bit of an erratic action, hopping it around with the gorilla medals. We're just casting them straight out and just a, a fairly quick, steady retrieve back and they just hit it on the way back in. So, a um, little bit, trying different things basically. Um, bait, different lures, jigs, it's, it's, all, it's all really good, it's really cool. I'm so glad that all of our plans have come together this week, it's been really, really good. And I'm so glad that he is having a great time, he hasn't been here in a long time. And uh, he's, catch he's catching lots of fish, which is good. Right here, folks, it's getting to golden hour on the island. Uh, probably about an hour and a half, two hours before sunset, which we've found is a really good bite time. We've got a high tide in about an hour. So this uh, gutter is well and truly full of water now. Um, we're both throwing jigs at the moment and metals. Uh, just seeing out the rest of the afternoon, so it's pretty hard to take at the moment. Alright, so I've gone to the lighter rod. A lot more feeling using this rod, you can feel everything. Very better than what you can hear my voice. Let it settle. And then just a really erratic action. I sort of wind up the slack. Give it a couple of hops. Slack. Really be erratic with it. And don't let it sit occasionally as well. And what I find when you get a bite, it's usually on the pause. Oh, yep. Oh, that had a bit more oomph about it. I moved down the beach to this guy. He's actually pulling drag. Just try and use these waves to get him up. Yeah, so these are these spines down here. They will hurt, and these ones up here, they will hurt your hands. Away he goes. So, a few of you might be wondering why we're we wasting our time catching so many dart. We're actually pulling out some big ones amongst all the small ones, and they're a great uh, bread and butter species. They actually taste all right, so we don't mind them. Uh, the tailor seem to have gone a little bit quiet, but we've got a couple of them as well. I, I'm not a big fan of Taylor. I think the taste for me is a bit strong, but uh, Shane loves them. And this week has all been about bread and butter fishing, so that's been our main objective. Uh, catching a feed each day, that's what we tried to do. Of course, if a monster comes along, we would have been really, really happy as well, but, you know, we take what we can get. And the fact that we've been able to feed ourselves has been really good. So hopefully through this video, you'll get a lot of tips whether you want to use bait, whether you want to try different lures, different techniques, um, we've showed we've shown a, a broad range of ways that you can actually catch fish on Fraser Island and probably on beaches all over the country. So yeah, it's been good fun. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know what you thought of the video, all that sort of stuff, and whether we missed something that you really wanted to see, or whether you found something really interesting. 
remember to subscribe okay please helps the channel so much all that sort of stuff just hit the subscribe button hit that notification button and uh you'll get our video you'll get a notification every time our videos come out i think uh shadows are starting to get long it's going to get cold soon i think we'll see if we can get a couple more dart for the fridge and uh then we might call it quits for the day Couldn't quite get him. Swam away. Sorry, buddy. Coming back. Folks, it is the last morning on Fraser. And we've got a couple of hours before we got to head across the island. Packing up rods and stuff. And I thought I'd just have a fish quick half hour fish so I reckon Liam will be basically coming over he'll go dad I don't want to do this 1,000 to, oh I'm getting hits already yeah look that's even oh my god they're all over it They're just on the edge of that white water there where it goes from foam to green. I think uh, I haven't given this Stratica clean since I've been here. And I can hear sand underneath the spool. Uh, it's due for a bit of a clean. Sandbank. See all this foamy stuff? And then behind it and just to the left of it, there's green water. I'm aiming for the edge of the foam and the green water. Nice long cast. 1,000, 2,000. Well, that's it, folks. We're heading back to Gari Fraser Island in the next few weeks for a family adventure. And I'm pretty sure during that trip, my eldest son, Liam, will be putting to the test everything we've shown you in the last two videos. Wherever you are, stay safe, and I hope to see you out in the water one day. All the best. <music>